Welcome to the Sega Spy Bus Master System, featuring the CPU BIOS, the management engine, and the Gigabit Ethernet, all sharing the same flash, but all independent hardware that could access it at any moment. So how does all that work out? Well, this is the section where we talk about the privilege and access control that is enforced between these different Spy Bus Masters, these different chunks of hardware that can access the Spy Bus. So back in the map, we had a hex 60, which is going to be the start of the master section of the flash descriptor. And what's there? Well, this requires a bit of interpretation and a bit of table reading. So the first thing is flash master one, which corresponds to the CPU slash BIOS. And this basically says the CPU has access to the spy flash and that's going to be called flash master one. Now this is going to specify different permissions about what this thing can access, what it can't access. So scrolling down, we interpret the least significant 16 bits as the requester ID, which must be set to zero. Okay, well that's easy. So boom, we just covered those 16 bits. But now the rest of this is going to require some careful interpretation. After those 16 bits, we have the next five bits as B and then zero. So B would be 1011, and 0 is 0. So what does 1011 correspond to? Well, it means that can the BIOS read the flash descriptor region? And this is set to 1, okay? So the BIOS can read the spy flash descriptor region, which, you know, is from 0 to FFF. Can it read the BIOS master region? Well, it can because it's set to 1, but also this is just kind of a do not care bit because a particular spy bus master may always read its own region. So the BIOS slash CPU spy bus master can always read and write the BIOS region. The management engine, reg man management engine spy bus master can always read and write the management engine and so forth. So the self access control is always sort of a, doesn't care. It's always gonna, the hardware is always gonna let it through. But basically you can see that this is saying, you know, can the BIOS read flash? Can the BIOS read BIOS? Can the BIOS read ME? Can the BIOS read gigabit ethernet? Can the BIOS read platform data region? So there are however many bits there are for different regions. And like I said, you know, Intel still has more bits that are available. And then this says, you know, these are all going to be the read accesses. And then the next is going to be all the write accesses. So can BIOS access flash descriptor? Yes. Can it access itself? Yes, but we don't care what that says. Can the BIOS access the management engine for read? And this is set to zero, which means the hardware is actually going to restrict the BIOS from being able to read from that memory. Can the BIOS access the gigabit ethernet? And the answer is yes. Can it access the platform data region? The answer is no, but it's unused on this system, so that doesn't really say anything. Okay, so I said moving along, what is this information? This is A1010. So can the BIOS write to the flash descriptor? No, it may not. Can it write to itself? Yes, it may. Can it write to the management engine? No, it may not. Can it write to the gigabit ethernet? Yes, it may. Can it write to the platform data? Who cares, it's not there. So what, uh, what UEFI tool here is trying to tell you is it basically parsed this data from the flash master section of the flash descriptor. And it's saying, you know, in summary, the BIOS can read the descriptor, the BIOS, not the management engine, and gigabit ethernet. It can write, not the descriptor, yes to the BIOS, no to the ME, yes to the gigabit ethernet, and no to the platform data region. All right, I shouldn't have just leaned over there. I'm sure that changed the audio sound of things. But anyways, these two bytes are talking about read permissions and write permissions for the CPU flash bus master and to the other regions on the flash chip. Now, specifically, Intel recommends that OEMs configure the flash descriptor so that it's never writable by anyone anywhere after it leaves the factory. And so this is good because if you make the flash descriptor non-writable by anyone, then all of this information gets sort of locked in place. So that means anything you said in terms of like, you know, the BIOS may not access the ME or the ME may not access the BIOS, that stuff becomes sort of set in stone as far as software is concerned could still potentially be changed with hardware or some, you know, override mechanisms. But, you know, these are the recommendations and as long as the vendors follow it or just use the defaults, which, you know, their hardware tools uh, provide defaults that'll set it this way, then it'll be, you know, set up to make these sort of restrictions.
Additionally, we talked about how, you know, the BIOS is not able to actually write to the management engine region. And so that, you know, begs the question, well, how exactly is a management engine firmware update going to happen? You know, there has to be some way to do it. So what is that way? Well, we don't really cover that in this class, but that's just a thing to keep you wondering and to go out and explore and read the fun manuals. Okay, now moving on to the next bus master. The next bus master is Flashmaster 2 ME, and the interpretation is as follows. Least significant 16 bits, once again, has some sort of requester ID, and this is actually set to zero. So that's interesting. The same requester ID used for the CPU in the management engine. Uh, usually things like requester IDs are used by the hardware to try to distinguish, you know, who's talking on a particular bus. This is kind of implying it's not able to make that distinguishment, which is interesting. But anyways, let's, you know, focus on those access control bits. So this is D and C. So what is D1101? So it's saying, can the CSME read from the flash descriptor? Yes, it may. Can it read from the BIOS? No, it may not. Can it read from itself? Yes, doesn't matter what this bit says. Can it read from the gigabit ethernet? Yes, it may. And can it read from platform data? Doesn't matter, it's not used on the system. Can it write to the flash descriptor? No, again, that's per the recommendations. Can it write to the BIOS? No, okay, that's good. That's sort of privilege separation of a sort. Can it write to itself? Yes, it may. Can it write to the gigabit ethernet? Yes, it may. And again, this is sort of, you know, the particular vendor could set this up so that it's, you know, not writable. It really just comes down to what kind of functionality is there. One of the sort of early uh, marketed functionalities of Intel Management Engine, or the marketing name was Active Platform Technology, sorry, the marketing name was Active Management Technology, was the notion that the management engine could be alive in low power states, it could still interact with the network in order to wake up the system, you know, do remote BIOS updates while the system's still sleeping, stuff like that. So you can imagine that if you're going to use that kind of functionality, then the management engine needs access to the uh, gigabit ethernet in order to interact with it somehow. Whether that necessarily means it actually needs to write to its flash is a different question. And can the management engine actually write to the platform data region? No, it can't, but it's not in use, so it doesn't matter. All right, so the good news here is that, you know, the Dell system is configured per Intel's recommendation to lock it down so that neither the management engine nor the BIOS are able to write to the flash descriptor region. That's good. What about writing to the BIOS region? It's not allowed to do that either. That's good because that would theoretically mean that if the management engine was compromised, it wouldn't be able to just automatically and arbitrarily privilege escalate into the BIOS by rewriting the BIOS contents. Of course, you know, there's other mechanisms that could potentially still allow that. But, you know, from an architectural perspective, this is trying to provide the, you know, separation from the management engine and the BIOS. So then we move on to the Gigabit Ethernet and that Flashmaster, what can that do? Well, now we actually see a requester ID that is, you know, first of all, it's non-zero, so that's good. Now we have actually have some distinction. But second of all, when you were reading your documentation, you would have seen that it, documentation said this must be 218, but on the Dell system, you would have seen 118. Well, that's of course because this is not the right data sheet. This is not a PCH7 series data sheet. This is the ICH10 data sheet. So whatever, close enough, pretty close there. How do we interpret the rest of it? Well, we've got eight, so one, zero, zero, zero. So can the gigabit ethernet read from flash, host, or ME region? No, it may not. Can it read from itself? Yes, it can, and this bit really doesn't matter. Can it write to the flash descriptor? No, it may not, which follows the Intel recommendation. Can it write to the BIOS or management engine? No, it may not. So again, you know, this would mean if there was some sort of functionality for, you know, for instance, um, arbitrary firmware code execution in the context of the Intel uh, Gigabit Ethernet, perhaps there was, you know, some extra network boot functionality or something like that and that ended up getting compromised. Well, at least this sort of configuration would make it so that a compromised Intel Gigabit Ethernet could not automatically privilege escalate by being able to write into the flash regions of the BIOS or the management engine. 